Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about disseminated intravascular coagulation. This is one of the important differential diagnosis for TTP, HUS, ITP. This type of conditions are very common in emergency room. So, the knowledge about these type of diseases are very, very important. They are, all are emergencies, but treatment is slightly different. Disseminated intravascular coagulation means whenever there is a trigger, it can be an infection, it can be an injury, there will be increased clotting in our clotting mechanism will be formed in our blood vessels. But that is a controlled form of clotting mechanism. But in some conditions where the trigger is uncontrolled, the clotting also will be uncontrolled. So there will be increased coagulation inside our blood vessels. So that will utilize a lot of fibrin. Uh, platelets, uh, so many things it will be utilized. So, uh, these clots will be uh, like body will try to dissolve these clots uh, uh, by its own mechanism. So, uh, there will be a continuous clot formation that is uh, thrombin formation uh, that will be dissolved and this type of things will be continuously occurring and patient will be losing uh, his coagulation factors, his fibrin, his platelets. So, almost all uh, uh, coagulation mechanism will be derailed. So, this condition is called as dissemination, disseminated intravascular coagulation. So, initial mechanism is microcirculation thrombi. So, there will be clots formed inside the microcirculation. Uh, that will lead to consumption of coagulation ma materials. Like materials uh, will be utilized for uh, uh, coagulation or clotting that will be dissolved. So, body will try to dissolve these clots by its own mechanism. So, this continuous process will produce uh, uh, consumption coagulopathy. That means initially it will be only clot formation that clot will be lysed then again clots will be formed that will be lysed by body. So, continuous clot formation will utilize all the uh, materials like platelets, thrombin, fibrin everything then these clots will be dissolved. So, uh, ultimately patient will lead to uh, a condition like a patient will have continuous microthrombi inside the circulation then patient will have bleeding tendency. So, there are two important problems. Initially, it will be only clot formation or thrombin, uh, thrombus formation. Then the patient will develop coagulation problem that is bleeding problem. So, activation of clotting mechanism by uh, injuries in the blood vessel, thrombosis will form, clot lysis will occur, consumption of platelets and clotting factors will occur, uh, formation of fibrinogen and fibrin degradation products will occur, then ultimately it will lead to hemorrhage. So, initially it is a uh, increased thrombosis, then ultimately it will lead to hemorrhagic manifestations. Now, we can see the causes for this DIC. The most important cause is always infection. It can be gram negative sepsis, meningococcemia, pneumococcal infection, staphylococcal infection, malaria, calazar, viral fever, leptospirosis. So many infections can produce DIC. Then, obstructic syndromes like uh, post uh, uh, delivery or during delivery, patient can have various syndromes like abruptio placenta, amniotic fluid embolism, retained dead fetus. All these things also can produce DIC. Another important condition is snake bite, especially viper bite that can produce uh, DIC. Then severe burns, uh, severe trauma, pancreatitis, acute uh, promyelocytic leukemia and other uh, blood malignancies. Post blood transfusion syndromes like uh, many conditions we already learned that trally or other conditions, graft versus host reaction. Here also patient can have DIC especially when we are transfusing plasma rich products. Severe acute liver failure also can present with DIC. But here uh, diagnosing DIC is very difficult in uh, liver disease because liver disease has, uh, has got a uh, like, uh, like uh, it has got lab uh, parameters almost similar to DIC. So, diagnose, diagnose of DIC in liver disease or severe liver failure is very very difficult. Now, mortality is very high in uh, DIC. DIC as such uh, in sepsis, it can produce 30 to 50 percent of mortality. Idiopathic purpura fulminans will have 18 percent mortality. 
uh, septic abortions will have 50 percent mortality so mortality rate in dic is very very high whatever may be the cause the, the mortality or, or death rate is very high now you can remember the, uh, the causes of dic by a, a mnemonic that is tom slv trauma obstructive causes malignancies blood transfusion burns sepsis liver failure and venoms that is snake bite in that uh, most important is always sepsis that is a com most common cause in emergency room for dic and uh, occult malignancies and other things also come into picture in uh, conditions now there are two important phases we have already seen that one is thrombotic phase second one is fibrinolysis phase thrombotic phase patient develops uh, uh, micro thrombi throughout his circulation and later the thrombus will be lysed and that uh, that uh, thrombosis and lysis uh, produces a lot of consumption of uh, coagulation factors and platelets. Uh, uh, so, there will be ultimately it will lead to consumption coagulopathy and bleeding or hemorrhage. So, thrombocytopenia is one of the classical findings seen in uh, DIC. Initially itself you can see thrombocytopenia. If you see the uh, picture in TTP, ITP, HUS, all these conditions also you can see thrombocytopenia. So, thrombocytopenia is one of the important character of many complicated diseases uh, including DIC, H, uh, HUS, TTP, ITP, all conditions you can see thrombocytopenia. And it also can be uh, seen in conditions like malaria, sepsis or leptospirosis. Uh, dengue fever they all will lead to DIC also. Now, if you see the clinical features the most important clinical feature initially itself it will be the bleeding tendency because uh, thrombus formation we will not be able to identify because uh, patient may not uh, notice this thrombus formation because all these thrombus formations are micro thrombi in his uh, body. So, he may not patient may not notice if the patient is inside the hospital then we can do some investigation and diagnose that micro thrombi is forming. But most of these patients present with severe type of bleeding and they can also have microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. See this microangiopathic hemolytic, uh, hemolytic anemia you can see in uh, TTP, HUS also. So, here also you can see this microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. You can see the clinical features uh, with this percentage bleeding is 64 percent, renal dysfunction 25 percent, hepatic dysfunction 19 percent, respiratory dysfunction 16 percent, shock 14 percent, central nervous system uh, dysfunction 2 percent. So, almost all organs may be involved in DIC. So, this is a uh, true uh, like multi organ dysfunction syndrome. Now, TTP HUS DIC is very difficult to diagnose sometimes in emergency room, but some investigations will tell you whether it is TTP, ITP, HUS or uh, DIC. Uh, TTP Adams 13 that is a protease that levels will be low and HUS you can see uh, you can do the culture for uh, Shigella or uh, that type of infections you can do. But uh, important investigation will be in DIC that is very very important you have to notice that PTINR, APTT, fibrinogen these are the three investigations which will tell you that is not TTP, that is not HUS, that is not ITP. Platelet count will be low in almost all conditions whether it is TTP, ITP, HUS, DIC platelets are low. But you can see here PTINR is increased in DIC, APTT is increased in DIC fibrinogen levels are low in DIC. So, these three investigations will tell you that this is DIC. So, lab wise the uh, diagnostic criteria for DIC is elevated PTINR, elevated APTT and very low fibrinogen levels. So, we have to be very careful when we are dealing with uh, thrombocytopenic conditions. If PTINR, APTT is elevated and fibrinogens are low then it is mostly uh, DIC. So, this chart will give you a complete picture of uh, the differential diagnosis of HUS, TTP, DIC. I am not going to the details of these things because uh, we have seen previous classes uh, the same uh, type of things. Uh, only thing is Adams 13 is uh, very low in uh, TTP. 
other conditions it can be low but uh, uh, it is not very low less than 10% or less than 5% pt inr aptt is uh, prolonged in dic uh, fibrinogen levels are very low in dic adams 13 is low in uh, ttp uh, culture for uh, uh, shigat shigala is uh, positive in hus now lab investigations are very important uh, in all these conditions thrombocytopenia is classical feature prolonged ptnr prolonged apptt then hypofibrinogenemia is typical for dic and is uh, very low in dic panic level is less than 100 schistocytes indicates microangiopathic hemolytic anemia antithrombin 3 levels may be markedly reduced in early uh, DIC itself. D dimer can be elevated, but D dimer will not give you a diagnostic clue for any disease. Any most of the condition like sepsis, myocardial infarction, uh, or any infections, DIC, all these things, uh, D dimer can be elevated. So D dimer does not uh, give you a clue for a particular disease, but uh, a negative D dimer gives more importance for uh, like uh, it. It tells you that uh, there is no thrombus formation in the intravascular compartment. Now DIC has got three important uh, features: elevated PTNR, elevated APTT, low fibrinogen. So you can see here intrinsic and extrinsic pathway of coagulation cascade is damaged, and fibrinogen levels are low. So that is DIC. Now there is a condition called as pre-DIC. You can diagnose DIC much earlier. For that, uh, no need to go for the previous three-step uh, uh, pathway. So PTNR, APTT, uh, fibrinogen. Here, uh, before that itself, there will be elevation in the INR and decreased levels of protein C and antithrombin levels. That will give you a diagnostic clue that the patient may be going to uh, DIC, we can call it as pre-DIC. The advantage of the diagnosing this uh, this problem in the patients, uh, like uh, you can treat the patient with heparin during this early phases of uh, DIC, because late phase of DIC we cannot use heparin because that phase it is hemorrhagic phase. The first phase is it is thrombotic phase. You can prevent thrombosis by giving heparin at this phase. Now there are two uh, important uh, conditions that is uh, say the, the DIC itself is subclassified into acute DIC and chronic DIC. Acute DIC patient present with all fulminant features but chronic DIC you may not be seeing the patient uh, like clinical problems like acute DIC. Chronic DIC mainly seen in solid tumors and other aortic aneurysm like chronic processes but acute uh, DIC the problems can be due to sepsis, infections, drugs, so many other things. Now once you diagnose DIC, di diagnose of DIC is by elevated PTNR, elevated APTT, low fibrinogen levels less than 150. So if you diagnose like that then here you have to treat the patient with three important factors. One is uh, fresh frozen plasma, uh, cryoprecipitate and third one is platelet. We can see here fresh frozen plasma should be given 10 to 20 ml per kg that is very important 10 to 20 ml per kg body weight is um, uh, is the dose for uh, uh, dic 200 to 200 250 ml of ffp can increase the coagulation factors by about 2% so that uh, so you can give 10 to 20 ml per kg uh, ffp uh, can be started in acute phase but that alone will not be enough you have to give uh, cryoprecipitate if the fibrinogen levels are very low. Cryoprecipitate 1 to 2 bags cryoprecipitate per 10 kg. If fibrinogen levels below 100 mg per deciliter and the aim to increase fibrinogen level to 150 mg per deciliter. One unit of cryoprecipitate usually raises the fibrinogen level by 6 to 8 mg per deciliter so that 15 units of cryoprecipitate will raise the level from 50 to 150. The replacement of 10 to 15 units of cryoprecipitate for every 2 to 3 units of FFP is sufficient to correct hemostasis. So that is a dose. So replacement of 10 to 15 units of cryoprecipitate for every 2 to 3 units of FFP. 
A third one is platelet transfusion. Platelet transfusions are also uh, very important in DIC. So, we have to correct the platelet transfusion, platelet uh, levels, platelet transfusion 6 to 8 units if the platelet count drop below 20,000. That is very important. Dose 1 to 2 units per 10 kg body weight are sufficient most of the DIC patient in severe thrombocytopenia. So, we have to correct, uh, uh, we have to give FFP that is uh, coagulation factors, cryoprecipitate for fibrinogen, then platelet transfusion also should be given. So, these are the three important treatment protocols for DIC whereas uh, uh, other conditions we have seen the treatment is uh, plasma, uh, plasma paresis or plasma exchange or uh, other uh, 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 immune mediated drugs we can give. But here there is no other treatment option we have to give. Uh, FFP, cryoprecipitate and platelet transfusion. Heparin is useful in initial phases like we have seen the pre-DIC phase we can see heparin otherwise uh, heparin will not be helpful and sometimes in late DIC heparin will be dangerous also. And one of the important thing what we have to remember is uh, we have to find out the reason for DIC whether it is infection, whether it is malignancy, SLE, whatever it is. The treatment of that condition is uh, more important than uh, just focusing on treatment of uh, DIC because DIC treatment we have to give uh, FFP, cryoprecipitate, platelet but all these things will uh, be utilized in the same day or within 24 hours these things will be utilized in our body. So, we have to aim, uh, we have to uh, treat the primary pathology suppose it is a gram negative infection we have to use higher antibiotics like meropenem or piprasilin tazobactam. If it is a, a SLE like feature like SLE induced DIC then we have to use steroids or rituximab uh, like that we have to give. So, initially treat with FFP cryoprecipitate platelets but find out the cause as, as early as possible then treatment uh, the patient may survive otherwise the mortality rate in uh, DIC is very very high. You already seen that it is 50 to 60 percent of the mortality occurs in sepsis itself. So, it is a medical emergency and one more important thing is we have to rule out other conditions like uh, the close differential diagnosis are TTP, HUS, DIC and ITP. So, all these things are uh, should be diagnosed and cleared because their treatment are slightly different from uh, DIC treatment. Thank you.